Alright Deb Crassnauts, my name is Paborian and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Apologies for it being such a long time, but YouTube is taking the piss with monetization. But never mind, it's back, it's fixed, and I've got a whole slew of episodes for you guys to watch. Oh yes, I have. Now, some other unfortunate news as well. Uh, with the update of 21 recently, I've got an update in my client. All of my mods were broken, the, the campaign road mod was broken, I've lost all my progress there. It's gone horribly, horribly wrong. So rather than sitting down and waiting to do my uh, entire space program again, I'm going to get something else on the go for you today. Because one of the one of the things that has really done my head in of losing my campaign progress is that I never got to do my Juno missions that I wrote in there, and I've been dying to do them ever since I wrote them. So today we're just going to go ahead and do that, but we're going to do it in a pretty decent way, I think. We're going to head on over to the space plane hangar because this is what we're going to be using now. If I load this up, now if I'm lucky it didn't load a craft, yes, because I've got a secret thing to show you. As you can see I've been busy building more space planes, um, falcons no less, because you know that's my type of craft. So first off, what I originally wanted to do this mission with is the Falcon X1, which is a fully SSTO space plane. Pretty damn cool if you ask me, look at this, it's, like, it's pretty standard. It wasn't built for fire or anything, so it didn't have to be like anything mega. But it works, it does the job, it gets into orbit, it, get, uh, it gets itself to where it needs to be, and it has the ability to refuel itself, so that's all good. But um, I chose not to go for SSTO. No, I'm going for DSSTO, Falcon X2, load this up. Because, let's be honest, SSTOs are cool, but I've, I've just done... I've done lots of SSTOs. I've, I think I've got that pretty much down now. I want to do something else. So I thought I'd have a go with a dual stage to orbit craft. So this is what I built. It's a lot lighter than the other one. And I don't have to carry these horrible, horrible engines around pointlessly. Especially when I get to Juna and I can't use them. So uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking this up to space. Uh, we're going to attach it to something and then we're going to go to Juna. It's going to be pretty exciting to say the least. But again... I should also tell you something else. This isn't technically the space plane we're going to be using. Oh no. I have got something even better to show you guys. Check this out. Alright, we're back. And yes, what you are looking at here is my very own custom textured space plane for today's mission. Pretty damn cool if you ask me. Now, I've had, if you've been on the Kerbal forums recently, you may have seen me post a picture of this, but I had to show it off. I think this thing looks absolutely mint. This is going to be our little craft for getting ourselves up to the uh, adapter thing that I have placed, ready to take ourselves to Juna. But it's going to be pretty good. I like the look of it. It's a. Uh, it took me a bit of a while to do because it's quite a fiddly thing retexturing a part, but. Uh, if you guys do want to see how, on how to do that, just uh, I might make a tutorial about it. It depends. I need to get some good screen capturing software and whatnot. But it's once you've done it once, it's quite easy to do, and you can make yourself some really, really awesome looking craft here. So uh, yeah, I think this is what we're gonna use now. To be fair, I'm going to go and revert the flight back to the space plane hangar and we're going to use the dual stage to orbit version. That there is the standard Falcon X3, however if I load up this one here, you'll see that this one is equipped, ready to be taking us to space. It's going to be pretty exciting, I like it, I like it a lot. But without further ado, I've asked around a bit, a bit too long now, let's go ahead and launch this shit. Now. This thing should, in theory, do as I ask. Now, I've had a couple of launches with the other craft, and it worked exactly the same. This is just the same craft, except it uses, um, obviously, the different color parts, and it uses a custom RCS tank. That's actually the new fuel tank that I've just filled with RCS. It has the same amount of RCS as the other tank. It weighs about the same. It's about the same size. It's uh, not cheaty in the slightest. <laughs> I say. But then again, something that does bother me is these tanks, but uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more. Let's get let's get these engines activated and begin the mission to Juno! So yeah, for those of you who are wondering, don't worry, the, um, the campaign mode will be coming back at some point. I just don't know when. Uh, mission controller hasn't been updated yet to the, la the latest version, so... Uh, 
it'll be a case of re-downloading that again and if I can I'll try and get my uh, original progress back I also will have to write out the, the June emissions again but no matter it'll be fun regardless but uh, enough about that let's actually talk about this mission at hand now this is something that I've never actually done for you guys on the channel I mean I, in my spare time I have taken like quite a few space planes to Juno and I've been able to land them but as you guys know we've had the new terrain recently um, and the problem with this is that Juno is now a little bit more bumpier than it used to be well I say a little bit more bumpier it's actually a lot bumpier than what it used to be <laughs> And uh, that presents problems. So far during tests of all this, I have not been able to land a space plane on Juno once. So that has been a bit... Yeah, to tell the truth. But no matter, I will be hopefully able to fix this today. And uh, with the knowledge I've learned, I'll be able to pick a much flatter landing spot. It seems like the craters are not the, one, the place you want to be going. I'll tell you what, these engines are, are, are draining out quite fast. This isn't normal. Um, this isn't normal at all. I'm actually not that confident in this at the moment. Now it looks like we're going to have to get off as high as we can and go as fast as we can, as quick as we can. That's a lot of if we cans right there, I think. But no matter, I'll give it a go regardless. Get yourself level. Still loving the new SAS, man. Fucking really, really liking the new SAS. I mean, it doesn't hold you in position as, as good as what it used to. But goddamn, is it easy to use in the old one. It is a hell of a lot easier, and it's better than having no SAS as well. I have actually seen a couple of threads uh, on the Kerbal forums of people complaining about the new SAS, but uh, quite frankly, yeah, I don't think you guys know what you're talking about. I love this new SAS, and if you don't love it, then then I, then I don't know, but you know. All right, come on, level yourself out a bit faster, mate. I don't want to be going too high, because I've got to get myself into all the velocities. I'm going to go for as long as I can off these engines as well, I think. And now we're up higher, I think the engines will be burning a lot nicer and a lot more efficiently. Oh, we're going back down, saying that. Let's uh, get ourselves back up. We're at a good height here to start picking up some serious speed, so what I'll do from here on out is go up nice and slowly. Nice and slowly indeed. Ugh. Can't be bad. Uh, once we get up to a certain height, I'll engage that aero spike as well to help out. Uh, if I can get over 1,200 meters, then that is going to be the speed I'm going to use to ascend to glory. I'm wondering as well how bad that these engines are going to flick off. Because normally when I do this, uh, they flick off and they fly ahead and they fly into each other and destroy themselves. Self-cleaning mess, as I like to call it. But um, I don't know how well that will happen on this build. I've, I've actually had to put struts on this because... Uh, on this particular build, the engines were flopping around, but we'll have to find out what happened. 21,000 meters. Let's engage the aero spike. Oh, uh, activate engine. Whoop. I'm going to slow these down a bit as well because the aero spike tends to overheat at certain temps. Right, 1,500. Let's begin our pitch up operations. And at 24. Provided the engines don't run out, which they might just do any moment, I'm gonna jetson them. Sod it, I'm gonna jetson them now. Go! Oh, that was kind of a hassle free, to tell you the truth. I didn't expect it to be that bad. Uh, now, I'm hoping they're gonna crash into each other and destroy themselves. If not, they will fall into the ocean, which is always a, a nice little thing to happen if you uh, really want to get rid of your litter. As I do, I don't like having space junk lying around. Because I don't have to recover them, it ain't so bad. Although, to be fair, I probably could have done and I actually put some uh, parachutes on them, to tell you the truth. That might have worked out quite nicely. But uh, we're actually gaining some pretty good speed here. What I'll do is I'll take myself up to about 2,200. Well, 2,100 should be a good high, actually, if I think about this. 40... Uh, yeah, 2,200 then. I don't want to go too high. Uh, about 80 should do me. Alright, uh, 71. All right, okay, we're losing a bit of height through atmospheric interference, so I'm going to take it up a little bit higher, and I'm just going to keep on correcting and see what happens. Right, let's leave it there, shall we? How low are we? So we're just about coming out the thin part of the atmosphere, so this should s slow down a, a considerable amount. 
shortly anyway. So, uh, you know, let's tick up to 85. There we go. That, that should have us perfectly. So now we're up here, I'm going to engage the time warp because that shouldn't affect the craft too much. I mean, it is quite a little craft anyway, so fizz warp shouldn't, like, really kill me off. Oh, uh... 82, yeah, let's leave it there and see what happens. Wicked! So our stealthy space plane has made it up into space. Told you it would. It's a good little thing. I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, the next challenging part is going to be docking up with the part in question. Uh, yeah, we're actually making good progress here. All I need to do is get out of the atmosphere and I can speed up time warp a little bit. Ugh. And do lo 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 lo. Get ready, 69. Oh, 70. Here we go. This is it. We can time warp. So, what I'll do is because I want precision for this little thing, I'm going to actually plot a maneuver node. This is something I normally don't do at this kind of height. There we are. That should do. 110 is our delta V change. Four seconds of burn. I think we've got more than enough fuel to actually do this, more so than what I would normally have at this point. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, 2019. Here we go. Five, four. Here we go. Uh, keep on burning. And let's get that. There we go. That is as about as a, as accurate as I can get it. I reckon. Uh, 81, 80. So there isn't much of a difference there. Our eccentricity is not high at all. That's pretty damn good. I must say, I'm quite happy with that. But the question is now. Rendezvousing up with that. Now, I'm going to cheat a little bit here, because what I'll do is, if I go over to... Actually, let me check my fuel first. Oh, we've got plenty of fuel, so if I go over to my uh, space centre... Uh, go on over to the VAB. Rather than sit there and go through the whole time warp process, I'm just going to get a little pod here. I'm going to hit launch on that. I'm going to do the time warp trick that I would normally do for interplanetary travels and whatnot. Not interplanetary travels, what is it? Oh, phase angles. That's what I normally use this for. Get myself into the right phase angle. So I'm just going to watch this go around a couple of times and wait till it gets like nice and close. Don't want to time warp too fast. Right. That looks quite cool, actually. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to switch to no awkwardness, no mess, no fuss. Um... Apologies for it being so dark as well, but I included a light just for such things so I can see what I'm doing when I come to docking up with the uh, the crafting question, which you guys shouldn't have seen yet. But uh, let me start plotting some nodes. What do I do if I plot one here? Let's see how close we can get. Uh, right, okay. What about if I take it back? And what about if I do it right here? Because I'm not getting... Oh, I'm not saying it as a target, have I? Derp! Right. Yep, yeah, so moving it on forward is going to be the one to do. So if I bring it behind the pod to about here... Um, what are we doing? Intersect... 78 kilometers. What if I bring it closer? Aha, that looks like the place to do it at. What have we got? 10 kilometers. Uh, could get a little bit closer. 9 kilometers. 13, right. So here is about the primest opportunity to do it. So let's go on ahead, check it out with E-Gage, and get ready to burn. Um, NA is our fuel. Well, that doesn't help, but because it's only 8.4, it shouldn't really be a lot, to tell you the truth. It shouldn't be a lot at all. Um, one propellant. Right, that's something I need to keep in mind when I'm doing what I'm doing as well. So uh, let's get up here and find our little point. Power is also a concern as well. I haven't actually equipped this craft with a way of recharging power. So um, that's going to be a bit of an issue later on down the line. Right, as soon as I were nearly here, I'm going to start thrusting and see what happens. Some pelvic thrusts. Ah, what have we got? Uh, perhaps maybe if I got some RCS on, maybe. And started doing some... Uh, aha, look at this. 
take it down nice and close. Yeah, that'll do. I don't want to blitz my RCS too much. So, um, oh god, this is going to be on the dark side, isn't it? Uh, right, okay. This isn't going to be much fun. Not going to be much fun at all. Right, so I should be able to see that thing now. 64 kilometers. Let's give ourselves a bit of time warp and see how close we can get to it. We may even be able to like normalize our distance and uh ooh, ooh, there's a little bit of a we're going on a bit of a funny angle here. I know that isn't going on a funny angle because that is perfectly equatorial. Aha, here we go. So if I can get my where's the retrograde marker? So we are actually kind of going towards it, sort of thing. Uh, if I can normalise the speed out entirely, I'll try and do it all off for us, because we've got plenty of this stuff left. Two, one. Seems legit. Right, okay. And now we'll prograde ourselves all the way to it. Prograde all the way! I know it's a little bit early for, for Christmas songs, but never mind, eh? Let's take it up to about 20. That should, uh... Oh, <laughs> it says 20 and we ended up taking up a bit more. So, uh, what's the closest intercept now? 5.5. Alright, here we are. Um, so, let's again reduce our speed to naught and start burning towards it. Now, this is the point where I should be getting a bit smart about uh, how I'm doing this. What? Alright, so point... Uh, I need to... I need to preemptively think about which direction this is going to be. So, if I start burning down here, that should start moving up towards it. No, it's not. It needs to be start burning up here. Alright, so docking is something that I'm still not 100% at, but I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm not bad at docking, after all. Um... Right, okay. We're getting a bit further away now. This is taking far too long. Alright, get over here. Hold yourself on here. Alright, you hold yourself there, Sass. And keep me going this way. Now, which way am I going to burn with the RCS to keep this this way? Alright, here we go. Alright, that should, in theory, take me exactly how I want to. Oh god damn it. Um Oh, 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 that was a bit too fast, so uh let's get some RCS on and see if we can actually boost this up. Three, two, one. Here we go, this this looks about right, so um uh, we're gonna go pro grade and we're gonna reverse. Reverse thrust. Reverse thrust with our RCS. In fact, no, let's not do it with our RCS. We'll uh, do it with the actual thrust itself. Okay, hold. Let's reduce our speed to zero. I'm actually getting in very close now, so uh, that's always good news. Right. I'd like to know where the light... Oh, are we still... It looks like we're actually still on the light side of this. I, I didn't think we, we were going to be on the light side, to tell you the truth. Never mind, eh? Um, thrust this way. Not too much, though. Alright. That should be exactly how we want to do this. So from now, here, what I can do is I can slowly work my way towards it. We're going to have to get over, open the docking shield for when we attach it. Should be fun. I hope I can get this thing in here now. So, for you guys who haven't seen this before, this is a object of my own design. I took um, inspiration from the Jedi Starfighter from what I believed was Episode 3, but apparently they do it in Episode 2 as well, according to Scott. So, uh, I was a little bit wrong there. <laughs> as per usual, Scott was right. But, um, you know, I'm not fussed. But yeah, uh, if you've ever seen the, uh, Star Wars Episode 1 and 2, and you've seen the bits where they... Um, uh, dock to rings, you know, for the hyperdrive units and whatnot. This is what this is, except it's not a hyperdrive unit, it's just a uh, a space plane unit. Alright, here we go. It looks like we've lined ourselves up quite nicely here as well, so uh, I'm going to get the RCS and we're going to burn some to try and keep this uh, on level. Uh, there we go. Right, so now I've got that where I want it to. 
I'm going to start slowing down because we are, we are actually going at this quite fast. Um, am I also going the right way? I think I've gone the wrong way as well. Right there. Right, you go to it at like that speed and we need to... Oh no, we are going at it the right way. So we're going to engage our lights for this. Ha ha! Nice! And there it is, the interplanetary adapter. Good times, good times I have by all. Now, how am I going to tackle this? I think one of the best things to do is going to go for chase cam. We're going to go at the back of it, I think. And uh, all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get myself like nicely lined up with how it is. Right, there you are. Go that way a little bit and turn this way. Now that looks about right to me. I've got to get this as uh, on a straight as a, of an angle as I can. Because the last thing I want is the space plane going into this thing a bit cockeyed and uh, the thing starts spinning out of control while I'm thrusting. I mean, it does have a bit of out of control spin, to tell you the truth. But uh, it's nothing that can't be fixed with uh, a bit of control as and when you're doing this. So, uh, yeah, there you go. That looks perfect, to tell you the truth. Oh, no, it doesn't. That looks perfect. So, get yourself this way a little bit. Stop the sass from going out of control. And we are going to begin docking procedures. Uh, how are we doing in the front of this, by the way? Alright, slow ourselves down nicely. And duck. Twist it up a little bit as well, just so we're a bit more flat. See, the sass isn't holding us that straight, but it is keeping us under control to a certain extent. Just wait till we get attached to that thing, it should, it'll be a lot better once we do this. Um, right, we're actually going up a little bit there, and we're not quite level. Nice, that looks about right. Uh, get rid of that, that's annoying the hell out of me. Alright, go down a little bit more. Uh, go this way a little bit. And down a little bit more. Are we coming to... Oh yeah, we look like we're actually going to be coming into this quite nicely, I, f I think. Uh, slow yourself down just a tiny bit. We're coming, we're coming in very slow now. Very slow indeed. Uh. Alright, now we should technically be right on top of that thing. Oh no, we're not quite. Uh, we're almost there though, so uh, there we are. Suck that on, strip, suck it. Uh, we'll use the RCS to help us out a little bit. There we are, we're done, we're on. And that was actually quite a nice, uh, what's it called? So, now actually connected onto this thing, let's power up this system, shall we? Ooh. Nice. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, interplanetary adapter for the win. So, um, yeah, light off. And that should be us good, ready to go to Juna. Um, for you guys at home, I'm going to cut the episode here. And uh, actually, first I'm going to engage the engines. I'm going dis <laughs> to disengage this because I want to make sure I remember this. Shut down engine. Right, nice. So yeah, so for those of you at home, I'm now going to go cut this episode and uh, get in preparation for getting myself to the correct phase angle for Juno. To be honest, I should have done this beforehand, but never mind, eh? If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to leave a like or a comment. If you haven't already done so, hit subscribe, and I'll catch you all a bit, people. Peace out.